Welcome to the Eat Y'all podcast, where we discuss the struggles and successes of the farmers, food producers, and chefs who are working to get better ingredients into restaurants today and to ensure their availability in the future. This week on the Eat Y'all podcast, we visit with a legend all the way in L.A., and I don't mean lower Alabama. This chef resides in Los Angeles, California, and is the co-owner at Bianca's Restaurant in Los Angeles. He's a world-traveled pastry chef, but uh, I have to admit, we did get a little sidetracked talking about Argentine barbecue. And my next stop to the West Coast will definitely include a visit with uh, a guy who you'll kind of see is almost like the Dos Equis man and the pastry chef and international man of mystery, Federico Fernandez, Chef Fetty, was uh, tremendous as a guest on the podcast. Hope you'll stick around and listen. We visited with him while he's actually sitting in his restaurant, so you'll get a little background noise, but that's just the sound of lots of happy patrons and happy employees working. So stick around for this episode. Welcome back to the Eat Y'all podcast. I'm your host, Andy Chapman, and I'm here with my my new friend from across the country in L.A., Federico Fernandez. Chef Fetty, welcome to welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. It's an honor. Well, it's really great to hear. I've heard bits and pieces of your story, and uh, r- we're really excited to get to talk to you and, and learn a m- little bit more about what brought you to America, brought you to L.A., and... Uh, got you doing yeah. all the things you're doing now. So tell me, like, how did you, how did you start co- cooking? Where'd you grow up and kind of give us a little background? It's a funny, really funny story, but I think it's funny. Uh, I come in from a middle, middle, middle class uh, family. My mother used to teach the math and then uh, my father mm-hmm. used to be an architect as well. Right. You know, I was a, when I was a kid, I, I don't know. I was the youngest kid in the family. The four, 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 four sisters and brothers. And uh, I don't know why, but when I was like around, I don't know, maybe eight, nine, I would say between seven and eight years old, I start to take, you know, cookbooks from my, uh, have a, a couple of, you know, a, a shell of books. And there are some good recipes. I start to do this recipe. I think I was bored or something, you know, I, was, I want to do something. I don't know what to do. My mother used to work, my, my brother, they are older, so they are doing their things. So I see, and I start to do whatever. And then when I start to, you know, in the, in the school, when they, they ask you what you want to do when you are, a, you know, when you grow up or whatever. And I always say I want to be a cook. I don't know why. Because my mother, I hope, you know, usually your mother cook good. I, you know, hard to say, but my mother was no good cooking. You know, he was a teacher, a great teacher, but no good cooking. <laughs> so at home, I, you know, I used to cook, you know, whatever, you know, whatever I see in the recipe, sometimes sweet, sometimes savory, but I used to enjoy to, you know, take recipes and, and, and do stuff. I don't know why. I guess for my grandmother, I took the, the kitchen, you know, she was a great cook, my grandmother maybe, uh, but always I, you know, I never say I want to do a lawyer or a doctor or, you know, usually, when, you know, as a kid, right. uh, or you want to. Always when they ask me, you know, I want to be a cook, I would say. And then, of course, when I finished my high school, I, I, I worked in a couple of places before. When I was in uh, high school, I worked in a little restaurant around my city, the city where I used to live. And then uh, just to see if it's really what I want, right, to work. And then the, I decided to, yeah, that's what, because my father always, you know, traditional family, say, are you sure you want to do uh, that? I don't know if it's the right decision. And I always say, yes, I want to do that. And they support me, you know, really good. And then I, you know, after high school, I went to culinary school and then I started, you know. So are you, there. are you from a big family? Yeah, we have a, you know, it's my mother, my, my father, and then we have a three, a two brothers and two sisters. Two, two brothers and two sisters, huh? Yeah, yeah. All the, so I was a kid, you know. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to school. I don't know why it's coming from somewhere. I always like to cook all the Then I, you know, once I went to a school or, you know, I started to work a little bit, I, you know, I went more from the pastry side of the, of the kitchen. And I, you know, and I stayed there. Well, and, and let's talk about that real quick. So you're, you're currently yeah. outside of uh, your restaurant, Bianca's, um, in, uh, yes. in Los Angeles. 
First of all, where is it in the city for folks who, who know that area? In, in, in Tulor City. In which city? Exactly. Tulor City. Okay. And, uh, and it's a cooler city is it's, it's between close to the say like a, it's a, it's a middle part of the city between downtown um, Santa Monica it's a beautiful neighborhood it's called cooler city it's really really nice and it's growing a lot anyway here. That's amazing. You always hear about uh, Santa Monica Boulevard, and and uh, I think it was a Cheryl Quir- Cheryl Crow song that had something about yeah. Santa Monica Boulevard in it. And uh, so even yeah. us even us folks from Mississippi know about Santa Monica Boulevard. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> so uh, and I was recently actually uh, around the time I was connected to you guys, I was in San Francisco. And I've yeah. been to San Diego, but I've never, I haven't ever been to LA. So we'll have to, we'll have to really? fix that and, and break some bread together. Oh, you have to come here. It's a beautiful city. I came here 2011. It's, it's a, no more 2007. Sorry, 2007. I came here. Yeah, it's a great city. Yeah. So y- you went to culinary school, and yeah. I-, I know you in Buenos Aires. In Buenos Aires. Yeah. So what what was it like growing up in Argentina? Oh, it was great, man. I love my, my, it's my country. Always be, always will be my country. I know now it's a little, you know, a, a long time here in LA. I feel, I feel part of LA as well as well. But Buenos Aires and Argentina is going to be always my, my, my place in the, in the world, right? Buenos I, I live in, a, I grow up in, a, in like a suburb of Buenos Aires. Big city, big uh, influence from European culture and also Latin because it's, you know, it's a Latin city, but a lot of the, the Italians, a lot of, you know, Spanish people, a lot of um, the architecture is really, you know, it's kind of French style, couple of buildings. It's a great, great city. Uh, I recommend any, anybody who like to know cities or whatever, Buenos Aires is one of the kind of cities, amazing city. And the food is really good there. The food is amazing. I love. I mean, it's not because I'm from there, but everybody else say like, you know, of course we have a great meat, but also we have a great, you know, or back then, I, don't, I mean, now it's still, I think, great bakeries and great restaurants, a lot of good restaurants there. So I grew up in the, you know, in the suburb of this big, big city, you know, where you can go with the, you know, I was like maybe seven, six years old with a bicycle outside in the street, like a, you know, on vacation, you know, with the friends and spend the whole day in the bicycle, going around and having fun and, you know, great city. Now a little change, but, you know, kids doesn't, you know, it's different. I think it's different times, right? Different. But uh, back then I was uh, having so much fun you know, with my good friends and uh, it was a great city, you know, like uh, I love it. And I miss all the time. It's not like... You know, you always miss your your roots, but you can use to to miss the the, the, the this part of the the, the, the your life, right? Yeah. But uh, I like I like always go back there. I always go back like once a year, at least once a year. I like to go back there. I have all my family anyway there. Yeah, that's amazing. So, from so you went to culinary school in Buenos Aires. Yeah, yeah, and then. W- You've obviously a world traveler. What what was your first step into into the U.S.? Oh my! Well, the first step was Los Angeles, but before that, I started to work for a big company. I always work in a hotel business in the in the pastry side in Buenos Aires. In Buenos Aires, I started like a small restaurant, and then I started in a more like a big company, right? The high, uh, uh, um, hotel companies. I moved first. I moved to. From Buenos Aires, I moved to Toronto. Okay. In Canada, I spent there with this company for four seasons with the company. And I stayed there two years, and then I moved here. I just, I have a friend. I, I never thought I came to the U.S., to be honest. I said, no, maybe I go to Europe, or maybe I go to, you know, maybe Asia. Or, but this, this friend told me, oh, I have an opportunity here in four seasons. They need a pastry chef, so I... Uh, yeah, you know, see so I say, I, I say, now at the beginning I say maybe I say three years. Usually the pastry chef is the big company, the executive pastry chef, the, or, the, or the executive chef they stay in the, in the hotel for two years, then the, or three years they move to another city. Three years they then move to another city. And I, you know, I, I, I wanted to do that. So I stayed in, in Toronto two years and I came here, I come here for two more years, two more years, and then I moved to 
Asia or Europe. But then the hotel, you know, the manager, the, the GM, or the, some, or the owner of the hotel say, no, we want you to stay here. So I stayed three more years, and then they, they, you know, they say, no, they ask me, no, can you stay more? So I stay. And I, li- I like the city too. So I have family, of, you know, as well. I have a kid, and so my, my son is already in the school. So I say, you know, we stay here. My wife also works in the same business. So we stay here. We like it here. That's lovely. That that's yeah. sounds like a fun journey. Yeah. Yes. So you ended up in, in LA and getting all sorts of, uh, what's the word accolades, uh, for, for your work there. Uh, that's gotta be, yeah. that's gotta be really rewarding. Yeah, no, it's great. I have I, I, I was lucky. I think I was a pretty lucky guy to be, you know, first of all, working big, big hotel business, great, great company. And then, uh, you know, and then they helped me a lot here when I came here, the owners of the hotel and the, to get my, you know, my my legal papers done and my uh, green card, whatever I needed to be comfortable here. And to be to me and, me and my family, which is important for, you know, when you're here, if you're alone, you know, if you have your family with you, it's more easy, right? And then uh, I always thought, you know, this I, I travel a lot with this company. I travel a lot anyways. I went to, I helped in Dallas. I went to Philadelphia, bueno, Toronto. I work in Uruguay as well as close to Argentina with the same company. You know, I travel a little with them. Yeah. It was great for me. So what, what do you feel like your travels kind of, how do you feel like that impacted your, your cooking style and your, you know, your, your palate and all those things? Oh, amazing. When I came here, you know, you know, from Argentina, you know, you never, you know, always you say, we are kind of more traditional. We don't go outside the box. So I didn't know what you say. Like, I don't know, like a grandma chocolate cake, for example. So when I came here, I tried amazing grandma chocolate cake, which I have the recipe here in Bianca. It's amazing. I, you know, you can see when you travel, you can see different cultures and also ingredients. That, well, now it's a little easier, but back then it's more, you know, it wasn't more too much global. So you can, now you can, you know, you travel and you see different flavors, different different methods of doing stuff. You know, in Argentina, we don't use it to make a cookies or to make a, a muffin or something. We don't do a scoop. We do all by piping bags. So, you know, when I came here, I see this, this uh, uh, ice cream scoop, right? They do it to do cookies. I say, wow, that's amazing. It's a, <laughs> it's a really a small thing, but they change a lot because, all the cookies going to be perfect the same size before you know said, yeah yeah you can wait it make too much time it's something like a little thing but you can see you can change like a lot you know when you travel you know you see stuff you like to go to the market or you know what they're using to do this or what they're using to do that you know different yeah so you you kind of picked up a lot of things from a lot of different yeah. places yeah 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 for sure so yeah. Who would you? Who would you say? And, and I know you're. You, from what I can tell here, you're you're a touch older than me. But uh, who would you say your your culinary heroes are? Well, I have a couple. I have a lot. Of course, I coming from pastry. A lot of French guys, French and some Spanish guys as well. Italian too, but more like you know. I grow up. I bought a lot of books. I think books, cookbooks, they are great. You know, just to see ideas. Not to not to copy exactly the same, but refreshing your 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 idea, different idea, different concept and uh, flavor or different. You know, uh, Pierre Hermé, which is uh, you know king of the pay right now. Pierre Hermé is a friend. He's a lot of bakery there. Uh, this is uh, you know amazing. Then uh, you got a. Uh, Fedic Bo is also is a French guy, really good uh, pastry guy. Oreo Balaguer, which is not, not, not that old, but it's a, uh, uh, from Barcelona, a pastry guy from Barcelona, really good. This is talking about more like a pastry side. Then uh, I have a couple of, you know, Argentinian chef. Now one is already, no, it's, it's already dead. It's called, uh, we call it Gato Dumas. It's a famous guy, the uh, character we have. It has a couple of good restaurants, famous in the TV as well. Malman, I think, you know, you know, Francis Malman is a guy who do all this barbecue. I, I, you know, he's a poet, 
competitions. Only one one of my thing as well, doing barbecue. But it's more like a home style, you know. Argentinian barbecue with wood and you know. So and it's slow cooking. And, you said, talk to me about what what is a traditional Argentine barbecue look like? Oh, oh, that's yeah. I was a barbecue. It's, it's something I, I love to make at home. It's like a it's a way to 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 cook the the meats. So it's a bit like a barbecue. Argentinian barbecue is a is a the whole meal is like a spirit. It's like a you know you go there. The person who make the barbecue. It's in charge of you start, you start early with a little drink, you know, you maybe you drink a, a little aperitif or something like that, then you start to turn on the fire, always fire with wood or charcoal. I prefer wood as well. So you can do you can start it's, it's, it's like a it's like a meal course, like a course meal. You start with the sausage, could be pork and uh, blood sausage. Mm. Then you go with the maybe you eat a little bit of a uh, soup bread from here, from the could be hard uh-huh. or from here. It's a, it's a glandule, it's a soup bread. Amazing. It's out of the world. This is my favorite. So you then you can eat sausage, a little bit sweet bread. And, uh, yeah, you can do the meat, a lot of meat. You can do a, a skirt, you can do a ribs, you can do chicken sometimes. It's not a traditional chicken, but you can do the barbecue chicken. It's all cooked in the barbecue, but be very slow. It's not like it's not flame, it's just the charcoal. So you do first, you do your flame on the side of the barbecue grill outside, right? The flame, and then just all this charcoal coming out, you use it to keep, you know, really slow, really slow. Yeah, and then it's, a, you know, it's about friends and family, you know, all get together. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, one guy cooking, nobody touches the barbecue except for him. That's the rule. But the rest of the people they are supporting, you know, drink, uh, you know, salad, some dishes, dishes, or whatever. Then you start, maybe you start like a Saturday or Sunday at, you know, 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. And then you finish at, you know, like 8 p.m. Or, or 9 p.m. You finish, you know, to eat. So it's a whole day, you know, with the bar, you know, yeah, so with it's, the a, friends it's a full ceremony, it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like a good time for sure. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I have the first thing I do in, in in Los Angeles. The first thing I did when I bought my house is I don't have nothing else. Eh? I build my the barbecue outside. That's the first thing I did because it's a brick, you know. It's a whole thing. It's yeah. not like a gas. Or, no, it's a whole thing with this, you know. So that's the first thing I did. So when when I come out there, the first thing I want to do is I don't want to eat at your restaurant. I want to go eat barbecue at your no. house. That's where yeah, I want to yeah. start. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. You should, you should. We will make it nice. I love to. That's my passion. Buy home, buy people at home, and do barbecue. Yep, barbecue at the house. We we do that a lot here in the in the south. Right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah, and uh, smoke, you know, a lot of lot of smoke, more smoke stuff, no? Yeah. Do you have a Do you have a favorite wood you use when you're when you're barbecuing? We use a lot of pecan and hickory here. I I use uh, almond, almond or walnuts. I find a good one here. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, because it's more like it's not to make it flavor, but to make more like a, I like like it has to be like a hard like a hard wood. Yeah, to make it more you know last longer. Yeah, that that walnut will really. I've never cooked on almond, but uh, yeah. I think walnut sounds yeah. pretty. Uh, that that's pretty. It's pretty hard wood right yeah. there. Yeah, so. yeah, and almond too is a pretty hard too. So both are good. Yeah. So uh, in in your restaurant. Tell me a little bit about, you know, you guys, you left the Four Seasons, you got a wild hair, you did this crazy thing, opened up your own place. Yeah. Talk about, you know, how that's going and uh, kind of what what it's like being the restaurant owner instead of an employee. Now you're the you're the boss and owner, co-owner of a couple places there. Yeah, we are. Um, so it's always I had a dream to do a, 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 a bakery for myself, right? Do a little bakery. My wife also, amazing pastry. She say she worked like amazing. So work, both we work in different hotel. Same company, different location of hotel. So I always wanted, I always say when I was a, in a school or whatever, I always say I wanted to, uh, when I was like 25, when, when I started to cook, I say I always wanted to do a, my own restaurant. When I was 45, I wanted to do my own restaurant, right? Not restaurant, I was simply, I was saying like a bakery because I'm a baker, you know, I'm a pastry, baker, pastry. I love to make bread. And I think this is something in the city 
No, no, but, but a little bit like maybe I would say like a five, six years ago was like, I mean, it's still hard to find a good bakery that you go outside and, you know, I remember in Argentina, you go outside, you walk a block and then you cut a nice baguette or a nice uh, piece of bread or whatever. Here, I went, you know, when I was awful, I know we I went to get a bread and it was tough. And so I said, you know what, I want to make, I want to make a bakery. So when I, you know, I, I started this idea, like uh, maybe, I would say five years ago, I would say, okay, I want to make my bakery, I started slow, I started my project. It's a small bakery, do baguettes, some bread, some Argentinian empanadas, maybe some croissants, some, uh, everything fresh, to be honest, fresh. But the same day, using the best ingredient I can find, the best flour, organic flour, the best, everything I can find, the best. Uh, because I think that's the key, right? So there's a, there's a, it's a hotel I used to work, Three blocks away is a, is a great Italian, it was, not anymore, but it was it's a great Italian restaurant called Madeo. Uh, it's no more in that location right now, it's so not a location, you know it. Uh, and I, the owner of this is a family, it's a family business, been in Los Angeles for 30 years, amazing food, traditional Italian, but really well done, using great ingredients. And I know that one of the sons of the, own, the owners, Johnny, I know, you know, I knew him for a friend in common. I mean, I used to go to the restaurant. He used to come to Four Seasons also to have branches and whatever with the family and they love it. And I had my, this idea, I said, okay, I want to do this bakery, whatever. So I, Johnny, let's do this. You know, I want to, look, Johnny, I want to do this uh, bakery. What do you think? And Johnny said, let's do it. I do it with you. I said, okay. So, we baba, we find it, we're looking for places, we have a little place there, but wasn't quite right. We shiny find this place, the one that we have in uh, Bianca right now. Great location. Uh, so it's two sides, it used to be two sides. One is a, uh, used to be another restaurant here from New York, I think it's called Canyon. Uh, it used to be a butcher on one side and the, 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 the restaurant on the other side. It was closed, but that time when we thought it was closed. So I say, Shani say, let's do bakery one side, the restaurant the other side. So we did. But if you see, that, Bianca is all one big restaurant. But this one is, is divided into the kitchen and the bakery. The bakery is all, uh, you can see, it's all, all open. So you can see everything what you do. You know, you know, it's all right. So we changed the whole thing of the restaurant. We uh, spent like a, one year, at least one year, to remodeling the, the place. I mean, uh, it, you know, it's, uh, now that people ask me or ask Johnny, what kind of food do you eat? We don't like to, we don't, I don't like to say, oh, I do Italian, Argentina, because he's from Italy. Right. right. We, we like to say, I like to say, we like whatever we want, we like to do. Uh, I like to do, I don't know, maybe uh, one day I do a brioche with the, you know, with the ice cream on the side. I do it. It's not Argentina. Maybe it's, yeah. you know, uh, you want, yeah, of course I do stuff, Argentina stuff, because this is my food that's coming through, is what I know. Uh, for example, I don't do macarons, because I don't know, I didn't grow up doing macarons, and, uh, you know, I don't, I don't like, I don't know, I don't like to make, I don't like to eat macarons, so I don't do it. It's not, I know it's a, it's a, it's a trend, but it's a, it's a, it's a trend, but uh, I don't like, to, I, I don't, we don't go with the trend, Right, uh, we like whatever we like to do. So uh, that, that's that's Bianca. Also, with Jan, Jan or Nicola, we have three of us. It's a Jan, Nicola, his brother, and uh, myself. And of course, it's a family. Here, you can see, you can come one day. It's a, a Jan, a, I, I feel he's a fine of Jan. Uh, he's, you know, the phone, he's working, doing like whatever he's doing, cleaning the, 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 the street, you know, or the, the wife is a Aldida, also Chinese mother, she's cooking a sauce, a special sauce for the night, or, you know, and he called it, he, um, my wife, of course, is working because she's a, she's a bakery, she's the one that she makes all the pastries, uh, she's not there, I'm, I'm dead, I have to work the whole day. <laughs> so she, you know, so it's kind of a family. You know, but they asked, you know, we opened 2019, August, just before the pandemic. And we did the, the beginning, we did really good, you know, of course, in the, the pandemic. But we started really slow, right? We started 
do the small menu, like open all the couple, you know, every day, but open all the, all the every day. Now we open all at night, we open, uh, you know, as small as, you know, as soon we can, in, like, the idea was open a slow, but do it like a right, and then as soon as we are comfortable, open, okay, let, let's do it. We yeah. start with the breakfast, then we say, okay, let's open for breakfast and lunch. Then we start, okay, let's open one night, and we we'll see what happens. And like this, now it's like, you know, you know, we kind of stop, it's like amazing. So, yeah, that's amazing. That's a, that is a, uh, yeah. that's a good story. So you got some, some good partners with you. Yeah, it's excellent, yeah, really. You know, I'm always, I always, always say it's, it's lucky also because, you know, to be fun is no, it's no easy, easy topic. You know, it's, it could be hard. I know a lot of people, they, they say, oh, we are best friends, let's open a restaurant. Two months later, oh, yeah, no, you know, no more friends. No okay. <laughs> so it's tough, you know, but. Uh, so on, on that note, what advice would you give to like a young chef who's, who's, thinks he wants to, or young, young, 40 year old, young, 30 year old, whatever, uh, that wants to, uh, hang out their shingle and, and start a restaurant. What, what advice would you give them? Don't do it, man. <laughs> no, 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 do it. You, you follow your, your dream. You have to follow your dream. Do whatever, you know, you have to do whatever you know what to do. If you, if you tell you, somebody tell you, say, oh, can you make me, Cake, that it, no, you know, I don't know how to, I'm sorry, man, it's not my thing. I prefer to say no. And so that my advice is do whatever you feel comfortable to do. Or of course, you can learn stuff and always every day is a learning process, but they have to know this is hard. You can't work hard. If you don't work hard, I guarantee you it's not going to work. If you don't work hard, if you don't work here, not every day, but you can have your life. You know, all, also you have to have your life. But people see like they open a restaurant and it's coming here and open the key and then, you know, hire people and then walking around and they go, oh, no, it's not like I got to, one day got to be a dishwasher, the next day you got to be, a, you know, the electric guy, you know, it's, you got to work hard. It's no, it's no, it's not secret. Right? It's only passion. And work hard. Don't try to do too many. Don't try to do too many things uh, that you don't know how to do. Try to do things that you know how to. Do. Yeah, and, and I think that's. Right. I think that's really good advice. And I think, you know, in anything, working hard is is yeah. key. Um, uh, yeah. But uh, restaurant owners that don't want to work, that's that's a recipe for for failure right there. Um, yeah, no, that's true. So y- earlier you mentioned that you want to you wanted to get the best everything that you could talk about kind yeah. of ingredients and, and your relationship with, you know, your vendors, your producers, farms, and kind of how that's, yeah. how that works with you guys. Well, I think that, like I say, it's, a, it's really, really important to, to, you know, to use the, the best ingredient. It's no, it's not secret. You know, if you make this, I give you the same recipe of bread. And then you use a cheap flour, and then in the other recipe, you use the best flour, you see a different. I, it totally, it's, it's crazy how you, you know, the delivery It's like a day and night. So that tell you that the ingredient is really important. It's the most, one of the most important things, the, the, the best ingredient. Yeah. And I also, say, I also think that with vendors, I don't, I don't go for, you know, I don't go for only one vendor, you know, okay, I got a, I buy the flowers, for example, different flowers. I don't use only one vendor because maybe this vendor has one thing, the other vendor has the other this kind of flowers. So I try to, to have like a, as much as I can the vendor. So I have more variety for me, you know, to choose. And the same with the farmers. Now, now it's a lot of farmers market around in LA. It's crazy how the prices, you know, of course, going to be a little higher. But then you got, you know, that's why I told me people coming here. So you, you, you charge the baguette five dollar. When I charge five dollar baguette because I use a flour, I I don't I don't I don't use a freezer. I, I use the best flour organic I can find. I use a no commercial yeast, which is more time consuming because you have to make all by 
Before. So if you want to buy a chili, you know, you want to go to another place and maybe, you know, I say, no, no, but your baggage is really good. Yeah, <laughs> because, you, you know, you have the time and you have the green and, and you, you can see the difference. But talking back to the, the farmer's market, it's a lot of farmers market around, so it's not, you know, not useful. We, we try to go as much as we can. We don't go every day because, you know, it's tough to, you know, step out from the restaurant and uh, it's a nice thing I had to do. So, but I think it's a good, you know, it's good. The problem with the farmer's market, the prices is high. Yeah. Go for a restaurant, for a restaurant. But I think you can find a good product in different, with different better. For the food, for the food we have a, or vegetable, we have like a four different vendors. So one, I can, I know this one, they have a good this thing, the oil has the oil is good. The oil. So, you know, at least if I, you can have the, the choice to, to, to get. Mm-hmm. So price, price is important, but it's not the only thing. No, no, it's price, of course, like a business, I'm, I'm really about with this. I'm not good with Chinese more, Johnny and Nicola, they are more taking care of the number. I don't know. I'm more like a hands-on. I like more, you know, like a spot. Of course, you got to watch it out your, your, your food cost. If your food cost is like, a, you know, 50%, it's impossible. It's not going to survive. You're going to close in two months. So you can watch your food cost. I have to use one about it. You know, you try to use your first sample to give an idea. The cost, we use the best flour we can find in the market. The best with quality flour, we don't go, you know, it's no question about it. So we do all, all the person we do also is with French butter. So we are we only use French butter because it was, it's a actually better for the croissant in the cross, the use for this butter is better. So the croissant came so much better. So all the, when you do a croissant, you use some of the, the straps, you, you cut it up so to make them the shape really perfect, you, you lose a lot of no, but usually no. Some people which doesn't know whatever they threw it away. This dough, we, you know, we put it together again, and we do, uh, for example, do Danish. So we do, uh, we use it for the study for the next croissant or croissant. We don't use croissant. For example, if I bake croissant today, the same this croissant doesn't sell tomorrow. I don't. You know, some people they put in the freezer, or heat it, and they use it or whatever. We don't use. We use only the whatever is baked that day. It's not a but for example, croissant, which is we get extra also because we know we will need it for the next day. What we do is to make it iron croissant, we need a croissant get one day old to make it better, right? So we use all this old croissant, we use it for the almond croissant, which is a great seller, you know. Yeah. And then you, you use some stuff that you have already instead of putting the crush or you do a Bread pudding, you say, I was about to say the, the, uh, the yeah. bread pudding, uh, the best yeah. ones I've ever made are with day old or two day old croissants. I mean, yeah, exactly. We do it, we do it sometimes with something most of the time because with croissant we go so much and we have no much uh, with almond croissant and all the stuff. We do also with brioche, great, great you people love it. Yeah. That's really wise. That's really wise. So on the on the protein side of your menu, do you do you have any favorite vendors or any favorite farms that are uh, providing you guys? I know you're. Uh, I know we, you usually uh, have your your flour on your sleeves, but uh, if you pull out the knife, uh, what yes. what what kinds of things do y'all use on the regular on the protein side? The protein we have also a couple of vendors. We do. For chicken, we use a lot of we use organic. Uh, it's, a, it's a famous um, farm here it's called Gidori chicken. Really good. So we use uh, this chicken for the, the chicken parmesan. We use this uh, only chicken really, really good. It's kind of more, it's just really you no know, artificial flavor or whatever. And then the meat also, you know, I think, you know, coming from a, a Argentina, we have great meat. You know, when you go to Argentina, oh, yeah. I mean, also, the kid, if you go anywhere, you get it. The, the cheaper meat is like amazing. Like the barbecue is like it's, a, it's still now. You can go, I go there yeah, and stay amazing. But here you can find, you know, you can find pretty good meat, man. You know, like, I still say the, the beef, or you can find it really, really good. We have a, we use a couple of vendors, which is, uh, you know, most of the, the cut we use is a skirt tail here, which is expensive for what it is. It's kind of expensive, but it's good. People love it. Uh, we call it, as in English, called entraña, which is a uh, stir stone. Entraña. Entraña, yeah. That's the, the, the cut of the meat. Then we use a, we use a lot of meat, veal. 
you know, Bill Milanes, Bill Nibol. We don't have it really a stay. I mean, a stay we have with a skirt. We don't have a big stay like a ribeye or whatever. We don't have a space in the kitchen to make that kind of steak as, you know, something that's kind of, you know, crazy. The, the kitchen is not that big, so right. you can't watch out the menu. You can't be smart and don't do stuff that you're taking too much, you know, too much space or whatever. The, the, a lot of fish, fish, we, we sell a lot, a lot. Yeah. Uh, a lot of ancinos, a lot, a lot of ancinos. But we try to go local, go buy also, go buy our set. We go into a place here, it closes a market, fish market here. We go, we buy a hundred or two. We try to do that too, because it's more, it's more cheaper and it's better. So, and then you choose whatever you want, you, you see what is available that day or whatever. The, the, you know, the bunch we have here is, it's not like a hotel that you are all, you know, it's more um, standardized and they have this bed. Here we can go and buy, you know, I, I change the day today, I change, I don't have to ask my body. I don't have to ask the general manager or the food and beverage director, then the, the assistant manager, then the assistant, the, you know, I can change it. I say, let's change it, hey, let's change it, let's change my problem. So, yeah. so you have a lot of flexibility. Yeah, that's the flexibility. So for you know, for many we change it. The shiny likes to change the feet. We're taking more care of the of the you know, regular menu or whatever the, in the kitchen, so we change it. Yeah. It's, 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 people like that. They like it. Yeah, I've got a favorite lunch spot here in town and uh it's great that most of the menu stays the same but but also they have something different every day and it's not the same yeah. thing. It's not like Wednesday is always yeah. fried oysters. Yeah. It, their special is going to rotate all the time, so uh, yeah. it keeps us. It keeps us as a regular. You you just trust the chef, and you just go, okay, yeah. give me give me your special. And I've yeah. never been disappointed there. So I think that's a that's really a neat. People love it. We do that. We have a, our regular menu, and then we have one place we do the special. Maybe we have like a four five special every day, different. What uh, what would you say is the the biggest mistake you've made in your career? Do you have like one, the catering that was a huge bomb or the bread that didn't rise and you were supposed to serve it or, or anything? I have, I have a couple. I have a, I have a funny one. I have, yeah, I have lots. No, 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 no. But I have, a, you know, you know, when you work in the big, you know, when you do a banquet for 300, 400 people, you know, something sometimes could be wrong, you know. Right. But I remember one. I remember one. I take I take responsibility, but it's not all my fault. I want to I want to clarify that one. Okay. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I, I don't want to sound like it's my all my fault. Okay. But it's a, it's a, you know I used to make. I mean I I still make it. big wedding cakes like you know huge wedding cake for you work in the hotel uh, you make party for three hundred people whatever. So I had this time I had. Before this party, I, I told my, my food and beer director, say, hey, I don't want to say a name. You know, you know, like, if, if, hey, I, I, I need this, you know, it's a stand. It's not, we have a stand in the hotel for the wedding cake. They're kidding, no, we should buy a new one, you know? Like, this one was way before. She said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think I told him, like, a couple of times, hey, this the stand, they are not really nice. We need to get a new one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this party came a huge cake, you know, like a cake, flowers, cake, flowers, all beautiful, like, like three tiers. No, more like was like a, I don't know, was like a, I think it was like a seven tier cake. It was like a wow. crazy, taller, taller than me. I had to get a letter to put the last, you know, it was huge. And I said, oh, we some boy about this uh, stand, whatever, pa, pa, pa. Anyways, uh, I go, you know, I, I used, to, used to, the pastry show used to be in the, in the basement. So, I did the cake, I go, take the letter, take the little card, take the cake. The, the, the party start maybe at 6 p.m., 5 p.m., I take the cake. I sit at like a 4 30, when I put in the room, nice, the cake, you look beautiful. Bro. But I see things, you know, every second, whatever, you know, I see the stand there. Whatever. So, Maybe at 1 8 p.m., I was in the pastry show. They called me and they say, hey, The cake for that. Oh. <laughs> the, cake, oh, the cake completely for that. So I had to, so I start to argue with him. I start to argue with him. I talk and I talk. Anyway, one hour, 
in one night it was like a eight and nine then I had the same cake again I did it again the same cake I didn't do I fake it of course I have it like a stereo phone mm-hmm. you know I have a stereo phone so I did it like with the flower it was like an hour I have body cream and then I did it I did it again and then you know and we had to get in the bath of the sheep to, you know to serve the cake so <laughs> we, we we fake a little bit but the end, the, the father of the group, which is a guy who has a restaurant here in, in LA, the next, the maybe next week, call us and say, Oh, here we go. Here is come, we'll go complain. We gotta give you this guy a free room because it's going to be a mess. And no, the, the, the father called to, to the chef and to me to congratulate for the food was amazing, the wedding cake was amazing, the party was everybody was happy. So they don't be that I think was uh, one part of the party was nobody. I don't know. Nobody, I, I get people so because it's impossible. You see, they can force so big, but no complaint. The, the good luck is no complaint. And, and, you know. But it's a big deal for you know for for a pesky shape that they take. Oh yeah, it's not you know. I imagine it's not. I was I didn't sleep for a week. You know, I was like, oh no, my god, it's a disaster. You know, it, it was pretty funny. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a really, really fun one right there. That yeah. that may be one of the best fails we've we've heard of on the podcast. No, man. no, I, I couldn't believe. It. I was so I was so mad. Man. So it was like imagine. No, it's impossible. No, no, it's, you know, no, you know. A way in case for me was you know I spent so much time to do way in case of whatever. But it happened. You know, be, that's why I mean you can be careful. You can be even if it's not your responsibility or if it's you, eventually it's yours. You know, if it's telling, if it's telling the case, you can for way for way. It's a responsibility of the person. So you can be, you know, you can be always concentrate and you know be careful with your time. Well, Fetty, we're uh, we're about to transition to the lightning round of the podcast. I don't know if uh, Sophia told you we, what we're doing here, but we've got some some intense questioning we're going to roll into next. Thanks for joining us here. So, um, so the first question is: Do you prefer biscuits or cornbread? I guess it depends how we make the biscuit the cornbread now, because I love both. I love cornbread, really love cornbread. But a great biscuit, I go a place close here in LA, a famous place. They do the biscuit amazing with the memory and the, and the butter. And the combo, if it's, the combo has to be moist and good. It's no, it's like combo, it could be, but it's tough. Man. I will go for a combo. Corn, you're going cornbread. All right, so sometimes they put a little sugar in the cornbread. Are you a sugar in your cornbread? Or oh, honey. A little, just a little sweet nip? Yeah, 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 honey, honey, I like the honey. I used to make one, I used to make one with the cheese, have a cheddar cheese inside the dough, eh? the cheddar cheese, and a, and a little bit of jalapeno. Yeah, I love, I love jalapeno cornbread. That's a, that's a, that's a favorite one. We eat a lot more biscuits here, but uh, corn, cornbread's good if you do it right. For sure. Yeah. Biscuit, biscuit, the key, I think, is uh, buttermilk, right? Gotta be with buttermilk. You gotta have you gotta have all the butter for sure. Exactly. <laughs> for sure. So all right, next up, dogs or cats? Hundred yeah. percent dogs. As pets, not as one. pets, not a meal. I just can go out yesterday, one dog. <laughs> there you go. Favorite cut of steak. Oh, I have a couple, but the best bet for me, eh? listen to this one. what? No, this is a kind of no secret, but the best bet is a cup of the ribeye. Mm. You know, if you have a ribeye, it's yeah. a cup there. That's the best. It's hard to find it because nobody, you know, that's the best part. I need to introduce you. We've got some, uh, we've got some beef farmers over in California that that have a lot of uh, ribeye cap. Oh the, really? Yeah, I need to I need to remember that because uh, oh, yeah. that's a that is a great cut. Some people call it the uh, what is it? There's another word that they use. It's called the the decal or something. Um, oh yeah, yeah. you know you know how chefs have like six names for yeah, the same thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I think that's what they call it over in in Charleston. Also, a good cut which I cannot find it very good here is I don't know how you call it. You call it we call it matambre. It's a it's a, it's kind of hard to to make it too. It's a meat between the ribs 
Mm -hmm. And the, the skin of the cow, I guess it's really thin. It's a really, really, really thin. So it kind of has a little bit fat outside. So it's hard to fight. If you make it too much, you, it's too much chewy, you know? Yes. But it's really, it's really good. It's kind of, so it's a pie, it's like a, it's like a piece of, like a sheet, you know, but it's, it's a meat. Yeah. It's like a sheet. But meat, I and mean, then they have all this, uh, but big, because the cow could be big. Eh? So it's really, really, very hard to find it here. Nobody uses it. Nobody uses it. I and, mean, you know, hardly when you find it, it's not really rich. That's why uh, I miss this, uh, this, this stuff. I need to translate how it's Matambre. I need to, I don't know exactly what is the name. I need to translate and see what is the name here. Katia. There is, it's different Katia. Also. Yeah. I'll have to, I'll have to try to, reconnect yeah. and introduce you to it i think we may have it a couple of producers over that way that we can connect you with it make yeah. and make and provide that um all right so favorite barbecue so here we you know we do the boston butts or you know pork shoulders we do the smoked chicken we do the ribs we do brisket what's your favorite no nah, favorite barbecue what are you talking about? It's Argentinian barbecue. No, nah, that's no question about it. It's no, what are you talking about? No, no, no. No, it's no barbecue. It's not another barbecue. It's Argentinian barbecue. It's a, yeah, and it's the, the, the whole, we call it costillar, the whole rib of the cow, the whole rib. We make it boom, like this. It'd be like, a, you know, a couple of hours cooking, yeah. But it's no, no, it's no. I don't know. I'm not a barbecue. It's not Argentina barbecue. All right. No, I, I, I know. No, I know. I know. I like. I like. I, I, you know, when I, I need to go. I need to. The truth is, like, I don't have time to do it for the business. Not for the rest of my. I love to go to shops and go barbecue. I would love to. I, would, I think I would get in love with it. We got the culture and the, the food there. I'm hundred percent sure. Well, I knew I knew when I said barbecue, that's where we we're going to go. But that's that's fine. All right, so you're 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 at a street taco stand, and you can order uh, you can order two tacos. What 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 do you order? Taco, maybe I use a lengua. Mm -hmm. I like the pastor, traditional pastor, uh, pastor. Al pastor. No, they call yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Yeah. yeah, I like the pasto, the new cilantro, the simple, but I like, and I like the tongue as well. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's acceptable. We love we love some al pastor and some uh, the the lingua is uh, is lingua, also yeah. is, is also good, very no? good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so here's a here's a fun one. So uh, if we had to call your wife and tell her that uh, look, fetty has been arrested, he's in jail. What is she immediately gonna think that you did? Uh, I don't know, maybe so many things like that. <laughs> but uh, I would say she would think, oh, you know, I drive, drive too fast in the freeway with a motorcycle, maybe. Do you have a motorcycle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, maybe that one, or oh, yeah, maybe, no, I don't know, it's really common guy, I'm really easy guy. But she, yeah, she know. But she will see maybe the one, or yeah, the one probably, yeah. All right, so we we got a couple more quick ones, and we'll we'll let you go. I know you probably got some, you probably got some of that work, work, work to do for uh, for <laughs> dinner know. service tonight. I appreciate you joining us here. So, if you could have dinner with any three people from yes. from all of time, who would you who yes. would you invite over for uh, for that dinner? Okay, so, but they, they, those, those people they are in LA or they are around the world. No, it's, I mean you can invite Moses if you, if you want to, like anybody. Anybody, okay. Wow, three people, yeah. Huh? Hold on, they're only three. Too, too many, yeah, too many, yeah. Because the, my barbecue, they are like you know, thirty people. Huh? <laughs> but, but okay, three people. Let's say they, they're a special guests. Let's say, and then we invite the other people yeah. too. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's no come my friends and uh, my family, whatever. So. Right. This is n outside of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I would buy the. I think I would buy you know a big chef in LA. I don't know who is a big chef in LA. What's from Park? Right. You have to know the so he can see our tradition. I I know he know because you know, but maybe I will buy and and also I you know something like I can take from his. Um, 
it's all information for his experience and his knowledge, right? Because he's a big name here. So one is saying, well, Wolfram Park, I will invite the, the owner of, uh, the founder of Four Season, is our shark. It's a, you know, a, great, a guy who, he was, you know, Tony, Tony Asoki, you know, created this amazing brand. All of his, you know, his self and uh, with his family and now he's, uh, you know, his hotel all around. He started with all a small, a small hotel in Toronto and now he has more than 100 hotels. I don't know. I mean, but, uh, you know, I will buy here also to, to see his experience and then, you know, to, yeah. to see what, uh, what it's look like. And then uh, I'm going to, so I will buy, um, I like music. I don't know, you know, I like, I will buy one uh, big music, you know, you know, Bob McCartney or, you know, Kate Richard or, or something like that. Just if he can play and he can have fun. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd no, be... Because I, like, I, I like music. I see music and food is go together, you know. Oh, the yeah, for sure. With the good food and whatever. So I would buy yeah, some musician. I love to. to. I, I, my dream is to have a, a play any instrument. I try and disaster. So no, no, no good. No. Yeah. And our last two questions. What's your what's your favorite beverage to celebrate with? I think for celery champagne. It's not an idea. I, it's not an idea. I like champagne. I really, I Blue really champagne. Do. Yeah, right. I like the champagne. I think it's a great to celebrate the best. So uh, one year from today, we're going to open up a bottle of champagne. What would we be celebrating? What did you accomplish? Uh, What's your what would be what would be the thing we talk about? I think we're going to celebrate uh, first of all that the the success of Bianca, uh, which is a uh, great for for us. It's, 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 we're growing a lot. We open a restaurant in a, another part of the the world, so not only here in LA. Uh, so I think we're going to celebrate the opening of some more restaurant. And the most important thing is we celebrate that we enjoy what we're doing. That's, I think that's the, the key. If you enjoy what you're doing, it's not, you know, could be something could be, yeah, you can go wrong in some place, you can go bad. You know, finally, if you do whatever you like to do, it's not, you know, it's not funny. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I think that's well said. Well, look, Fede, thanks for joining us on the podcast today. It's been a real treat to have you. And when I make threats of coming to visit people and eat their food, I, I try to come, carry through. So, please, 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 please. I love to. I would love to have you here with the family and friends. And yeah, we, you will have a good time. Yeah. Awesome. Well, look, it was it was a real treat, and we enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andy. You've been listening to the Eat Y'all podcast. Hosted by Eat Y'all founder and chief relationship officer, Andy Chapman. If you enjoyed this episode, it would mean the world to us if you'd join us in our mission to save family farms by subscribing and leaving a review. Even better, share this episode and follow us on your favorite social media account at Let's Eat Y'all 